I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. I am old enough to remember the high water mark of the Trump presidency. Can you cast your memory back that far to the speech, the one to the joint session of Congress, the one so measured, so majestic, so devoid of pants pooping, that it prompted a conservative television pundit to say, I feel like tonight he became the president of the United States. And it prompted a liberal television pundit to say, he became the president of the United States in that moment, period. Remember all the way back to that? That was a week ago. That was last Tuesday. That speech has not aged well. Tuesday, 48 words in. Recent threats targeting Jewish community centers and vandalism of Jewish cemeteries remind us that we are a country that stands united in condemning hate and evil in all its forms. Tuesday, Tuesday, same day, Trump implied to a meeting of state attorneys general, according to the one from Pennsylvania, that such anti-Semitic attacks might be false flags. Josh Shapiro quoted Trump as saying, sometimes it's the reverse to make people or to make others look bad. And he used the word reverse, I would say, two to three times in his comments, condemning hate. The next Monday, another anti-Muslim travel ban. Tuesday, dying industries will come roaring back to life. Heroic veterans will get the care they so desperately need. Tuesday, Friday, the Trump regime deported Clarissa Arredondo back to Mexico more than two weeks after unmarked SUVs showed up at her home near San Diego on Valentine's Day and captured her. Ms. Arredondo is the mother-in-law of a heroic Navy veteran now working as a contractor in Afghanistan and the other grandmother of that heroic veteran's two toddlers is on active service with the army and she may now have to retire and become a veteran to take over the deported grandmother's role helping raise the vet's kids. What made Ms. Arredondo so dangerous, so needing to be urgently thrown out of here? She may have once falsified paperwork to get her family a welfare check. Tuesday, we have cleared the way for the construction of the Keystone and Dakota Access Pipelines, thereby creating tens of thousands of jobs. And I've issued a new directive that new American pipelines be made with American steel. Tuesday. Thursday? Quoting Fox News, the Keystone XL oil pipeline won't use U.S. steel despite Trump pledge. Turns out Trump wanted you to think he meant the Keystone would use American steel, when the truth was his executive order is only for the next new American pipelines because Republicans in the Senate voted down an amendment requiring American steel in the Keystone, an amendment proposed by Democrat Al Franken. Tuesday, we will soon begin the construction of a great wall along our southern border. It will be started ahead of schedule. Tuesday. Thursday, Reuters discovers that Trump's promise to use existing funds to begin the construction has one problem. The only existing funds the Trump regime has been able to find is $20 million. $20 million will build you a Mexican wall that is less than four miles long. Tuesday, Trump says his government will be guided by two core principles, buy American and hire American. Tuesday. Also Tuesday, Ivanka Trump tweets a photo of herself in the dress she wore to that speech. It is identified by experts as having been designed by a Frenchman and having been manufactured in the United Kingdom. Buy American, hire American. Tuesday. I have ordered the Department of Homeland Security to create an office to serve American victims. The office is called VOICE, Victims of Immigration Crime Engagement. We are providing a voice to those who have been ignored by our media and silenced by special interests. Tuesday. Wednesday? Countless writers and commentators note that before taking power in Germany, the Nazis published a feature called Letterbox in their official newspaper, which provided a voice to those who had been ignored by the media and silenced by special interests and had been the victims of crimes by Jews. Once in office, the Nazi government began publicly disseminating the details of crimes by Jews. Tuesday, we are blessed to be joined tonight by Karen Owens, the widow of a U.S. Navy Special Operator, Senior Chief William Ryan Owens. Ryan is looking down right now, and he's very happy because I think he just broke a record. Even though it had been Trump who gave the order that sent Chief Owens to his death, 
in a raid that the previous president did not approve in an operation so controversial that Owen's father has demanded a formal investigation. Even all that, pundits, particularly on television, fell all over each other to praise Trump. I feel like tonight, said Chris Wallace on Fox, he became the president of the United States, and everyone is going to have to accept that fact. That was one of the most extraordinary moments you have ever seen in American politics, period, said Van Jones, until that moment a liberal, on CNN. For people who have been hoping that maybe he would remain a divisive cartoon, which he often finds a way to do, they should begin to become a little bit worried tonight. He did something tonight that you cannot take away from him. He became President of the United States in that moment, period. Tuesday. Insight that would last a lunchtime. Not a divisive cartoon. Became president. Have to accept that fact. Saturday? Terrible. Just found out that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism. How low has President Obama gone to tap my phone during the very sacred election process? This is Nixon, Watergate, bad or sick guy. No, not, not a divisive cartoon. As I said, this speech has not aged well. Tuesday, my job is not to represent the world. My job is to represent the United States of America. Tuesday. Thursday, Trump's attorney general is forced to recuse himself from any investigations of the Trump presidential campaign's interactions with Russia because, at best, he personally failed to reveal his interactions with Russia while part of the campaign at a meeting he got to by spending campaign money. Tuesday, we can only get there together. We are one people with one destiny. We all bleed the same blood. We all salute the same flag. And we're all made by the same God. Tuesday. Thursday? A Facebook and tweet storm about Jeff Sessions and about the nearly 66 million people who voted for the Democratic candidate. This whole narrative is a way of saving face for Democrats, losing an election that everyone thought they were supposed to win. The Democrats are overplaying their hand. They lost the election, and now they have lost their grip on reality. We can only get there together. We all salute the same flag. We're all made by the same God, except you 66 million people who voted for Hillary. Tuesday, the time for small thinking is over. The time for trivial fights is behind us. Tuesday. Saturday? Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't voluntarily leaving The Apprentice. He was fired by his bad, pathetic ratings, not by me. Sad end to great show. The time for small thinking is over. The man is not going to change. The man is not going to improve. The man is not going to be cured. The man is not going to become presidential. The man is not going to devote himself to anything except his own extraordinary, irrational, unquenchable, insatiable, unslakable, immeasurable, bottomless, endless, eternal need to keep Trump first and to make his ego great again. Resist. Peace.